In this video we are going to explore the world of hacking and learn how to breach an online shop, but don't worry, it's all for educational purposes. We'll take a closer look at JuShop, an intentionally insecure webshop and discover the challenges we can overcome, the measures we can take to address security issues and ultimately a lot about cybersecurity. So lean back and take notes. Hey guys, I'm Marco, software developer and DevOps engineer and you're watching Tech with Marco. In today's video, I'd like to showcase a tool by the OVASP Foundation, and this one is called JuShop. The JuShop is an educational online shop where you can buy juices, but it's insecure on purpose, so you can hack it. So make sure you're thirsty when watching this video, because after hacking, I guess you deserve a drink. And probably you don't want to spill your data in some random sketchy online shop in the future. First of all, security is uh, quite important nowadays and it has ever been, but the shop is a learning resource. So when you understand how these attacks work, then you can use this knowledge because then you can, when you code a web application, you can use this knowledge of how attacking works to prevent your application be vulnerable for that. So definitely recommend checking out the Jew shop because it teaches you very basic knowledge about web security. So let's head over to the helping guide of the Jew shop. So it has three parts and for us the part one and part two there are the interesting ones because part one is about getting the application up and running and setting up optional hacking tools which we don't need so far and part two is about all the challenges of the different vulnerabilities you can find in the, in the shop and let's head over to running the OVASP 2 shop. So first of all it does have very low system requirements which is quite nice. Uh, because you can run it on any small computer or small server and it does have different running options. So first of all, you can install it locally uh, directly from the sources, from prepackaged binaries or what I would recommend is using Docker. So you only need Docker on your computer installed and then you can pull the JuShop Docker image and run the JuShop Docker image. And easy is that you have your JuShop running. So I already prepared the statement here and I run that. One thing to note is that I made a different port mapping here. So it's not available on port 3000. So it's available on uh, 3002. So I'll just start that one. And now we have our JuShop up and running. Let's head back to the comprehensive guide here. Uh, we have different vulnerability categories like broken access control, broken anti-automation, broken authentication, cross-site scripting, injection like SQL injection, sensitive data exposure, and all different types of vulnerabilities which are displayed or which are available in the shop. And I'll demonstrate a few of them uh, because after that you can continue hacking on your own local juice shop and uh, learn things. So there's also a scoreboard where you can track your challenges. And this is actually the first challenge we need to solve. So this scoreboard is actually not available in the do shop directly, but we can make it available. And what we need to do now is we need to head over to our do shop. And first of all, this is the juice shop. So we have a starting page with all the products. We have apple juices, we have banana juices, we have egg fruit juices, and we have buttons up here where you can log in with your account. We have a search functionality and we have a side menu, but I don't see the scoreboard so far. And this is Actually, the first thing you should do when you think of hacking, uh, use the network tools, for example, in your browser. And those are most of the times at the F F12 button. And what we can do now here is uh, we can head over to sources and check out the main.js file. This is the JavaScript file, which is running the front end shop here. And we are looking for the scoreboard. And now I'm trying to find a link to the scoreboard. And I already found something because uh, this seems to be scoreboard preview. So I find another match. And now I have a link to the scoreboard and we can try that to access our scoreboard. Um, so I just add score minus board. And this is actually the first challenge 
we have solved so far. We found a hidden scoreboard page and on this page we have different uh, challenges to find. So we have the one star, the two star, the three, four, five, six stars. And these are all challenges which you can find in the shop. But I'll just demonstrate some of the first ones. So we can have a little star together and after that you can hack on your own. Let's head back to the comprehensive guide of the Jew shop. It is always recommending walking the happy path because it is quite nice to understand how the application is working. You're trying to hack or um, just to turn that around when you're programming you know how your application works and then you can see some security flaws. So uh, let's just go the happy path and uh, create an account, order a product and uh, yeah, have it delivered. So I head over to the account, log in and I'm already, uh, so I'm not yet a customer. So I create an account and now I click register. And probably I have my registration completed successfully. So you can now log in. And now I'm logged in in my account. So now I have orders, privacy and security, request data export and all those kind of things. But I just want to add my juice. So I add to basket, go head over to basket, press checkout, I add a new address. And I have my address now, which I can choose i choose the fast delivery um, i need to add a credit card what you need to know is uh, you should only add dummy data to that because it's not a real online job and now i have my credit card here i can use that to place my order and thank you for your purchase your order is being processed you can check for status updates on your track order pages and now I have a search result for uh, my order ID now and uh, we have our apple juice ordered. Now let's have a look at the scoreboard again. You can find it now on the left tab here and press scoreboard. And what we can do now is for example cross-site scripting. A short explanation of cross-site scripting is where you can create a link for example and then put just some JavaScript in that. And if you send that link to someone, this JavaScript is getting executed. So for example, me as an attacker, I'll send you a link to click at. And in this link, there is a cross-site scripting attack uh, in it, for example. Then when you open the link, the JavaScript is executed on your machine. And in this code, there could be, for example, some malicious code. And therefore cross-site scripting is quite dangerous to have. I'll demonstrate you how that works. So. For example, we can search for banana. Yeah. So as we can see, the banana is shown up here and this one is also shown up here. And this could make you think maybe the things you're entering in the search bar, they are rendered into the web page here. And, and here's the thing as an attacker, you could try to make use of a cross-site scripting uh, error and I'll type some, I frame here. So did I close that correctly? Source JavaScript alert. Closing the iframe tag. Oh, and I forgot some uh, quotation marks. And now we have this JavaScript executed on my browser here. And now I have a link on the top here, which I can then, for example, send to other people with more malicious JavaScript code in it. So let's reload the page and every time the cross-site scripting alert is happening at my machine. So this is quite dangerous. And let's head over back to the scoreboard. And oh yeah, I didn't perform the exact attack because now it's not marked as solved. Let's just quickly do that because the payload of the cross-site scripting was not found. 
And yeah, now we successfully solved the challenge of cross-site scripting. So let's try the next challenge and find more valuable information about the server our software is running on. Because software is often monitored by services like Prometheus or Grafana and other software monitoring tools, um, it's a quite standard attack pattern to look for those endpoints uh, where the software is exposing different metrics. And in our case, we are looking for a metrics endpoint. And this challenge is actually quite easy to find because it's a standard endpoint of the software Prometheus. But now we found the metrics endpoint of the software. And because this endpoint is not secured by any authorization, everyone in the public can read how the server is feeling, how the health of the server is. And this also gives quite valuable information for attackers. So a good recommendation is to always secure these sensitive information. And we have found another challenge. So expose metrics. Find the endpoint that serves usage, usage data to be scraped by a popular monitoring system. Uh, as I already said, this one is Prometheus. And um, yeah, easy as that, we found another challenge. So another really interesting one is now to gain admin access to the uh, server here. So I log out, uh, go to the account login, and sometimes those login masks, behind that there's a SQL query running. So for example, there could be a select user from user table where email equals uh, the parameter of this login mask here. So email and password equals our parameter two, for example. And this is a quite well-known uh, attack pattern, which is called SQL injection. And you can check if the login form is prone for that with some standard input. So as you can see, so the first part here is quite interesting. Um, so you can imagine that the select user from user where email equals and then the first quotation mark is standing before the email login field. And you can, for example, uh, manipulate now the login field with removing that. I have only one quotation mark and then enter one equals one because that is always true. And then the query is always returning the first entry it found in the database. And do you remember that also the password is checked, but we want to disable this check. So we are using the double dash, which in SQL stands for a comment. And everything after the double dash is then ignored. Oh, and I forget an or because the first one uh, the email is ignored and then it's getting or one equals one. And now we can enter like a random password because we actually don't know the password, but I can log in and now I successfully logged in as admin. And the email address of the admin is admin at juice shop. And probably with the admin account, I can access maybe the admin panel or administration panel. And easier said, I've gained access to the administration panel of the Drew shop. And I can see all the registered users. I can see customer feedback. And for example, I could delete feedback as a malicious attacker. Yeah, and easier as that, an SQL injection is revealing the access to the administration dashboard. Um, so let's head back over to the scoreboard and we can see that I have already solved some two-star challenges. So accessing the admin section or uh, where's the second one? Uh, log in as admin. And another one I'd like to showcase is, for example, directory browsing. And let's head back to the account uh, which I created at the beginning. So let's log in. And let's head over to the order history. And we have our order ID. And I want to print the order confirmation. So I open that in a new tab. And now I can see at the top here that we have this PDF on a FTP server. And I just, out of curiosity, I removed that. And easy as that, I see some uh, maybe quite interesting documents. And for example, I could check 
the package json dot back and oh i'm only allowed to download dot md and dot pdf files from here but there's another quite interesting effect now i see that an express uh, web server is used and the version 4.17.1 and this is also kind of bad pattern to use because when exposing this kind of information me or i as an attacker i can look up the software and that specific version and could for example check if that version has a specific vulnerability i could use so this is a nice fact to know as an attacker but for, i could for example see the md files here and i see there is an acquisition and this document is confidential so do not distribute and this is gaining access to sensitive information so let's head back to the scoreboard and we already can see that i've solved the challenge conf confidential document accessing and i also provoked an error because it revealed the web server version number and the last challenge for now is we could leave customer feedback and i can say this is a very secure shop but i can't press the submit button because i still have to uh, solve the capture first this one is eight and still i can't submit it but i have to give a rating now after i turned the stars on i can submit it and i give five stars so submit but i now want to give a zero star uh, rating and so the capture is 73 but i still can't click submit so i head over to my uh, developer tools and check out the submit button here and i can see it does have the attribute disabled true in html this one disables the button here but i can just delete it and now i click submit and now i could submit the zero star rating and this is also a challenge where it's quite easy to mitigate this problem because in the back end you could check if the rating is between one and five star and if not the server is not accepting it but it's not happening here so the back end accepted my review and yeah those are some challenges which were quite easy to solve and if you are looking for help you can always go back to the helping page here and you can also head over to the scoreboard and they also provide some resources about uh, different challenges here with tutorials here so you, you can click the tutorial button and um, now it's helping you to solve the challenge so to have some more security measures in place i link in one of these corners here my traffic with crowdsec security video because in that video i show how to install more security measures on your server and you guys let me know in the comments if you were already aware of that nice hacking do shop and i definitely recommend checking the do shop out hacking and learn from the tutorials and learn from the resource they provide to mitigate your security problems in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.